Good day class, we are here again for a brand new lesson entitled, Aquaculture and Fisheries, History, Development, and Systems. For the content standard, the learners demonstrate an understanding of the concepts and skills in fisheries. For the performance standard, the learners perform the skills in fisheries following safety precautions. For the learning objectives, at the end of the lesson, the students are expected to 1. Explain the background of aquaculture and its relation to fisheries. 2. Describe the types of aquaculture systems. 3. Identify career and business opportunities related to fisheries. Fish is one of the most important sources of food for people all around the world. It provides essential nutrients that keep us healthy and strong. Beyond being a source of food, fisheries also play a big role in our communities. They provide jobs and livelihood for millions of people helping families earn a living and supporting local economies. Truly, fish and fisheries are vital not only for our plates, but also for our way of life. Class, let me ask you something. Why do you think people started culturing fish instead of just relying on the sea? Imagine if everyone kept catching fish only from the ocean, what would happen if the supply ran out? Do you think the sea could provide enough fish for all of us forever? Before we begin our lesson, let us first unlock some important terms that we will encounter. Aquaculture is the breeding, raising, and harvesting of fish, shellfish, and aquatic plants. It is often called fish farming, and it helps provide a steady supply of seafood. A wharf refers to a platform built out from the shore into the water and supported by piles. It serves as a docking place where boats can load and unload goods, making it very important in fishing and trade. Fecundation means making fertile, such as applying fertilizer or manure. In aquaculture, it also refers to fertilizing fish eggs to increase the chances of survival and growth. A hatchery is a place where the hatching of fish or poultry eggs is artificially controlled for commercial purposes. Hatcheries ensure that young fish, called fingerlings, are healthy and ready to be grown in ponds or cages. Brackish water occurs when fresh water from a river or lake meets the salty seawater of an ocean. This type of water is very suitable for raising fish like milkfish and shrimp, which thrive in such conditions. Now that we understand these key terms, we are ready to explore today's lesson. Why aquaculture began? In the early days, people did not bother with fish culture because they believed that the sea would always provide an unlimited supply of fish. The ocean seemed so vast, and it felt impossible for its resources to run out. But as the population grew and illegal fishing practices increased, something began to change. The natural productivity of the seas and other bodies of water started to decline. Fish became harder to catch, and scarcity was felt in many communities. This problem led people to look for a solution fish culture. By raising fish in ponds, cages, and hatcheries, they were able to ensure a more stable and sustainable food supply. Now, let us take a journey around the world to discover how aquaculture began. In China, as early as 2953 BC, under the regime of Fu Hai, people developed net-making and fishing methods. This marked the earliest known beginnings of fish culture. Meanwhile, in Rome during the 1st century A.D., fish was considered a highly prized delicacy. Although fish farming was practiced, it was mainly for food, not for scientific advancement. Romans raised oysters, mullet, and trout in man-made ponds. 
In Germany, Jacob of Westphalia became known as the first true inventor of practical fecundation by artificial means pioneering a new way of fish breeding. Across the seas in England, Leonard Maskell made history in 1590 by publishing the Book of Fishing, earning him recognition as a pioneer of fish culture. In the United States, early records of fish ponds appear in 1792 through the diary of Squire Carroll. Interestingly, the very first species reared was goldfish. Moving to Indonesia, the origin of fish ponds is debated. Some say they came from China. Others believe from Malay traditions, but written records date back as early as 1821. Finally, in Japan, aquaculture took a unique form. Instead of focusing only on fish, they cultivated seaweeds and pearls. Mikimoto, known as the king of pearl oyster culture, pioneered pearl oyster farming and changed aquaculture forever. From one nation to another, aquaculture grew in different ways but with one common goal, to provide food, livelihood, and innovation for generations to come. In the Philippines, there is no exact record of when fish pond cultivation first began. However, it is believed that Malay emigrants introduced the practice long before Chinese traders arrived on our shores. The towns of Navitas and Malabon are recognized as pioneers in the fish pond industry, playing an important role in the development of aquaculture in the country. In the Visayas, Dr. P. O. Valencia is remembered as the pioneer of fish culture, while in Talaba, Oyster culture was first practiced, making it the birthplace of oyster farming in the Philippines. These beginnings mark the foundation of aquaculture in our country, helping shape it into an important industry. Development of Scientific Aquaculture in the Philippines Scientific fish farming in the Philippines started with milkfish experiments in the 1940s. In the 1960s, improved methods of milkfish culture were applied. To strengthen the industry, research institutions were established established in the early 1970s, such as the Southeast Asian Fisheries Development Center's Aquaculture Department in Tigbawan, Iloilo, the International Center for Living Aquatic Resources Management in Makati, the Central Luzon State University Freshwater Aquaculture Center in Nueva Ecija, the Brackish Water Aquaculture Center of the University of the Philippines. The Philippine government has set up model fish farms in different parts of the country to give technical help to fish culturists. Some of these farms also serve as hatcheries and nurseries, where fingerlings are bred and then distributed to local fish farmers. In freshwater areas, common species raised include tilapia, carp, catfish, mudfish, and gourami. For brackish water ponds, the most important species are milkfish and prawns. Meanwhile, the culture of marine species is still in the experimental stage, with only a few kinds successfully reared in ponds and pens. There are several types of aquaculture systems used around the world and even here in the Philippines. First, we have pond culture. In this, fish are cultured in water kept in an enclosed area made by dikes or buns. This is one of the oldest and most common practices, especially for raising tilapia and milkfish. Next is cage culture, where fish are reared from the juvenile stage until they reach commercial size inside a cage placed in rivers, lakes, or coastal waters. It allows water to flow freely, giving the fish a natural environment to grow. We also have pen culture. Fish are raised in a volume of water enclosed on all sides except the bottom. This system combines features of both pond and cage culture making it ideal in shallow lakes and coastal areas. Another type is raceway culture, where fish are raised in flowing water through a channel or tank. Because of the continuous water movement, this system can support a higher number of fish, commonly trout or other freshwater species. 
Lastly, there is the Recirculating Aquaculture System, or RAS. In this modern method, water is filtered, treated, and reused, with less than 10% replaced daily. It is very efficient, environmentally friendly, and suitable for areas with limited water supply. Each of these systems has its own advantages and is chosen based on the environment, the species to be cultured, and the resources available. Now, let's check your understanding. Choose the correct answer and write only the letter of your choice. Number 1. Aquaculture is best defined as A. Catching fish in rivers and seas B. Breeding, raising, and harvesting aquatic organisms C. Preserving fish using cold storage Or D. Transporting fish from one place to another Think carefully and select the best answer. 2. Which country is believed to have started fish culture as early as 2953 BC? A. Japan B. Rome C. China D. Indonesia 3. Who was known as the pioneer of pearl oyster culture in Japan? A. Fu Hai B. Jacob of Westphalia C. Mikimoda D. Leonard Maskell Or, in the Philippines, which towns are considered pioneers in the fish pond industry? A. Navidus and Malabon B. Iloilo and Cebu C. Davao and Cagayan de Oro D. Bacalod and Iloilo 5. Which aquaculture system reuses water with less than 10% replaced per day? A. Pond culture B. Cage culture C. Raceway culture D. Recirculating system 